One of the biggest challenges faced by data scientists is dealing with a massive amount of data. A practical way to study a population is to use sampling. In this video series on sampling methods, we will dive into four common use sampling techniques, which are simple random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, and cluster sampling. I will talk about what they are and the pros and cons of each sampling technique. Let's focus on simple random sampling in this video. You'll be able to understand what is simple random sampling and its pros and cons. Let's get started. The first method is simple random sampling. As simple as it may sound, we just randomly select an element from a population. Intuitively, we'd like to make sure that we do not favor any individual in the population when selecting elements. That is, we want to select our individuals uniformly at random, with equal probability. The hope is that by selecting our individuals from the larger population without preference, we will likely get a sample that is representative of the larger population. For example, assuming we have a list of all data scientists in the US, we can simply select 200 data scientists at random from the list for our sample. There are some advantages of simple random sampling. First, it minimizes bias. It is the least biased sampling method because every member of the target population has an equal chance of being chosen. Therefore, it is likely to have a high internal and external validity. Like any sampling technique, there is room for error in simple random sampling. But this method is intended to provide an unbiased sampling approach. Simple random sampling can be cumbersome and time-consuming when sampling from a large target population. This becomes a bigger problem as the difficulty of determining every element or individual in the population increases. Imagine the population of interest is all data scientists in the US. We can try to create as complete a list of individuals as possible, but it is nearly impossible not to miss some individuals. This results in non-randomness, as not all individuals have an equal probability of being selected. Simple random sampling can be vulnerable to sampling errors. Specifically, the randomness of the selection may cause the sample to not resemble the population as a whole. Basically, we have a sample that is not representative of the population. For example, if we choose 100 data scientists from the entire population, we may have 50 junior data scientists by pure chance, and they would compromise 50% of our sample when in reality, junior data scientists may only make up 25% of all data scientists. The technique we will talk about in the next attempt to overcome this problem by using information about the population to choose a more representative sample. As promised, we learned simple random sampling. There are three more sampling methods I want to introduce to you. And in the next video, we will look at systematic sampling. Stay tuned!